The Knights of the Shed Actual Play Podcast presents The Nightmares Underneath Through Ultan's Door Hi everybody and welcome back to The Shed I'm Dave and tonight I'll be your Game Master for Through Ultan's Door we will be using the Nightmares Underneath 2nd Edition system by Johnston Metzger uh, to play an adventure that is designed for uh, OSR systems. With me tonight, I have... Brent. Uh, I'm playing Farouz Jalashmid of Geth. He's a, um, of an undescribed profession, but he likes to sing, so perhaps he's a bard. Hi, it's Hayden. Um, I'm playing Suhad Sawalha, the champion. Hi, I'm Toby, and I'll be playing a character named Samir Crystal. Um, I, I'm a, li- a librarian, yes. I'm a librarian who follows the law. Yes, that's me. Hi, it's Paul here. Uh, my character's name is Kashaya... Zuvad Zada. He is a scholar. His profession is an architect and he follows the principles of science which made the city Geth what it is into this majestic metropolis. Kishaya, in the last few days you received a letter from a scholarly friend of yours living in the city of Neth Hadrazar. The letter was curious. It described a dream that your friend had where he believed in the dream he was wandering the streets of Geth, and he recalls entering a print shop somewhere in the city. And in the print shop, in the back, under some stairs, there was a fabulous door. He paid the owner of the print shop money to go through this door, and he doesn't remember all of the details of the dream, but he describes going through this door and finding himself in the land of dreams, in some kind of strange sewer. And he describes a number of details of this adventure. And you wouldn't think a lot of it ordinarily. Sometimes he sends you these strange letters rambling about his dreams. But what's strange to you is that some of the particular details that he gives you about Geth describing this print shop, it matches a shop on Eidolon Square that you've walked past many times. And his description of the owner, you've seen the man before. And it was perfectly accurate. But your friend has never been to Geth. He doesn't know the streets. He doesn't know the print shop. So you are intrigued by these startling details. Mm, This letter defies science. How can one dream of such a thing when one has never been there? It reeks of magic, perhaps. So uh, Kashaya meditates upon the correspondence from his scholarly friend for a week and then sets off on the street to eye the print shop in the Eidolon Square. So Eidolon Square is a a small square that sits off to the side of an area of the covered bazaars in Geth. It's an open square. It's a, a mixture of uh, residential buildings and artisan shops. Uh, a lot of artists live there. So it's, it's not a terribly glamorous area. It's a little bit run down. And the, the shop that your friend described has a small window on the ground floor displaying a woodblock print of the uh, aviary of the Chatelaine of Storms with monstrous crows. The uh, shop itself seems to not be particularly well frequented uh, as you sit and watch. And the the area here, in fact, seems quieter than it was last year, remember. And in fact, almost directly across the street, there's a house, uh, a two-level house with a a basement and then an apartment above it, which seems essentially abandoned even. So it's uh, fairly quiet. And certainly no evidence of anybody else out here who seems to have any leads on this print shop. Well, I'll uh, walk up to the print shop and have a peek in through the window. And in terms of 
What sort of things would this shop print? This uh, shop makes uh, prints of artworks primarily, so it's not a it's not a printing press. Uh, it's a, a, like a, a woodblock and um, similar kind of technology printing of of images. Um, it's a little questionable how you know there are there are issues under the divine law about pictorial representation. So it's not illegal, but it's a little frowned upon. It seems to have uh, images of false idols. Mm. The the Chatelaine of Storms is a reputed nigh immortal ruler of lands across the sea to the west. So a barbarian. Yes. I have a book entitled False Idols of the Barbarian Tribes. Mm-hmm. And so this takes my my fancy in, in many ways, because as much as I abhor anything that is not of science or of uh, logic, I uh, wish to understand the 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 dark minds of the barbarians, their ignorant ways and uh, how they could come to, well, I guess what keeps them in their mud brick homes. So I'll knock on the door. Uh, you hear a voice say, it's, it's open. And push my way in. Push your way in through and a little, a little bell jingles as the door opens and then shuts behind you. This is a sort of small one room shop. There's a door in the back that seems to go back to some kind of workshop or or living area, but there's a counter back there. And behind that is a a thin older man with close set eyes, uh, hands stained by the ink of his trade. And he says, oh, hello. What can I do for you? Well, I could not but notice the block design of the Chatelaine in the window. Well, the the Chatelaine's aviary containing... uh, the, the, the Chatelaine has these uh, enormous storm crows that are uh, reputedly uh, ridden into battle by her champions. These storm crows, um, they look to be some uh, harbingers of death and woe. Uh, and I was curious as to why a humble print person might be uh, displaying such things. Do you have mighty patrons or connections? No, certainly not. Uh, I, I could only dream of such things. But, uh, you know, it, it's strange. I, I only put that up just today. I, It's been sitting out the back for some time. I, it was made some time ago. There was little interest in it. But I took my fancy today and I put it in the window. It seems to have worked. You're here. Indeed. Do you have anything else out the back? Just my workshop. I guess I have some other prints out there, but uh, are you looking for something in particular? Uh, yes, I'm particularly curious in the false idols of the barbarian tribes. Perhaps uh, you might have something in a corner in your workshop. I can wait. Uh, I'm, I might have some... Hmm, make a... Uh, I should make a charisma roll. Uh, so in this case, it'll make it an overcome roll, overcoming his willpower. So you'll roll a d20 and try and roll high, and you can add your charisma modifier. Let's say 15. He says, well, I, I have some designs uh, from uh, New Voth across the sea that you might be interested in. Indeed. Please fetch them with haste. Though be careful not to damage them at all. He goes back and uh, you hear him um, moving a few things aside, back out in the workshop, digging for things. While he does that, yes. I just want to uh, double check to see if there is a, a door under a stairway. So you can't see anything in here. There's basically, um, this is basically a single room with some prints on display, the counter at the back and a door back that he's gone into in the workshop. You would guess based on the layout that there's probably a stairway back into the workshop that would go upstairs to his living areas above the store. Well, I shall um, nonchalantly wander into his workshop looking for this stair of my dreams. So you're not, you're not trying to sneak in there, you're just walking up behind him? Yes, yes. All right, he, he sort of turns with a start as you walk. And he says, oh, oh, well, I suppose you might as well come in. I'm, I'm having trouble finding these things, but uh, uh, you just, just stand there. I'm sure they're in this pile here. My good man, I am an architect, and I was admiring the aspect of your house and wondering how one finds egress to the first floor. Well, well, the, the stairway over behind us, obviously... Uh, I mean, it doesn't take an architect to figure that out, does it? 
I go over and uh, have a look and um, look for a door, possibly behind a curtain or something. So you you sort of wander around in the workshop and you can see uh, that where where the stairs are, uh, there is a a small um, door that looks like to a sort of understair storage cupboard. It's unadorned, very plain. Your friend described uh, this ornate blue and gold door, cerulean blue with gold leaf in swirling patterns. But he did he did talk about the patterns glowing in candlelight. I'll just have a peek through the door and uh, kind of n- note any um, windows that could be maybe left... Uh, unlatched for the night or Um, any other portals. There are no windows back here in the workshop because it, uh, like the back wall of this would share a wall with another building building behind it on the other side of the the block in effect. So the only windows you can find here on the lower floor are in uh, the one uh, in the shop. There there are also windows you noticed up in the the Mm. residential part of the building in the level above. Well, I'll say to him, well, very good. This is a fine workshop. I will await you in the store and I'll hastily walk back and remove the bell from the door. If possible, if it's a small bell, I'll try and rip it off. Or... Uh, all right. Uh, well, you want to make a ferocity save? Okay. So I'll try and roll under your under or equal to your ferocity. I do so. All right. You pull the bell from the top of the door. At that, he returns holding a couple of prints. He says, I found them. Do you want to? Ah, yes. Might, let, just come a bit closer, though. Let me let me have a look at those. And um, I reach into my pocket and see how many ciphers I have. I pull out um, the, the equivalent of, and hold it splayed in my hand, the equivalent of two ciphers in uh, mixed coinage. This is uh, the money that I have to buy uh, such block designs and prints, um, and I, I have a look, and I'll, I'll spend one cipher to earn his trust. I, well, I'm hoping to. All right. So you want to buy one of these prints from the West? Yes. All right. Well, he says, well, uh, I suppose you, I, I can let go of one for that price. You, perhaps you should choose. What, what's on offer? So he lays them out, and, and uh, you can see perhaps why they were in the back storeroom. They're rather lewd depictions that have come from the barbarians. Somewhat pornographic prints, perhaps um, something you wouldn't want to be caught carrying around on the streets. Well, um... He may have misunderstood your intentions when you asked your question. <laughs> I see. Uh, well, I will um, just point at one randomly whilst averting my eyes. <laughs> <laughs> Very well. Yes, that's a good one, actually. Uh, and yes. He rolls it up and hands it over to you. Uh, hmm. And, um... Are there any? Do you open at night? Uh, no, no, we're, we're closed. Uh, closed when the sun goes down. And is it just you who lives in the apartment above? Strange question. I I like to know uh, the people I buy things from. It's a personal relationship to build rapport. Well, my wife and I live above the store. Yeah, mm. and I've noticed that the area has fallen into some dilapidation in recent times. Uh, has it always been such? And I, I make that sort of small chit chat and see if there's anything to be learnt. Well, he he, um, he just talks about you know this economy and all this sort of stuff. He does he does tell a curious story about the the building across the way that there was a a painter who at one time was quite successful who lived there. His his works fell out of fashion and. Um, since seems to have disappeared and it's just been left empty, which he finds curious. And he also thinks that that's running down the property values around here. Having old abandoned buildings makes things look bad. Someone should come in and do something about it. Well, I am an architect, so uh, and I'll um, hastily scroll down my details for him. And if there is um, the possibility of uh, anyone wishing to develop this area, uh, perhaps you could recommend them to me, and uh, likewise, if um, if I have any scholarly colleagues who requires prints of a certain nature, he sort of uh, does some suggestive eyebrow raising at you about that. Uh, uh, then I will uh, direct them your way. Very, very good. Very good. Yes. All right. He takes your details and stuffs them in a pocket of his of his uh, work apron. And then I bid him good day, um, citing the three principles as a as a as a blessing, the three principles of Geth, which I believe are 
prophecy, scholarship, and reason. May they illuminate your soul. That's so very kind of you. Thank you. I'm glad to finally move one of those prints. Yes. Well, there is uh, always a function to things. And um, <clears throat> I should go home and uh, perhaps uh, serve, uh, uh, well, the function of things, and I get embarrassed. <laughs> <laughs> And with this, um, as I walk along the street and my mind is uh, thinking about what was behind the door and um, how I would have to sneak in at night and try and reveal the door by lamplight. And to do this, well, I'm not an adventurer and I might have to seek some out. So perhaps I should go down to the town square where perhaps there are notices or criers, and uh, pay someone a lewd print to maybe um, <laughs> to maybe find um, some companions of of strong mind and will and skill. All right. So the best place to go to do that would probably be the Grand Bazaar, which is not far away. A series of interconnected indoor markets selling almost everything one can think of. From songbirds and frankincense to North Sea ambergris and poisonous orchids that grow without light. Well, I'll try and find. Um, <laughs> yes, this is quite um, quite prejudicial, but I'll try and find a, a person who might um, have a liking just by their appearance for a, a lewd print, and try and retain their services to find me no less than three, but no more than five companions who might uh, wish to investigate a curious phenomenon. All right. Well, you have no trouble finding uh, any number of shady individuals who will happily trade a print to go out and uh, uh, try and round up some individuals. A few hours later, this person comes back uh, and finds you in the bazaar with three individuals in tow. Uh, as I, I will um, appraise them as I sip my hibiscus tea. What do they look like? First is a very tall figure that um, is probably female. It's hard to tell because she is wearing a full-face helmet with the, um, the, the visage of a, a golden helmet with the visage of a, um, a solemn woman. Perhaps I look at her because she seems the most um, unexpected. Yes, what can I do for you? Well, uh, I've received word that there is... Um, I wish to investigate uh, the phenomenon of a potentially magical portal under the stair of a friend of mine. Well, I have travelled many miles uh, seeking out evil to destroy, and if it is possible that this may be the source of some evil, then I would be happy to accompany you. I believe that uh, there is definitely the possibility of evil lurking through the portal under the stair. Well, I've just arrived in town and I'm between jobs at the moment, so... Very well. Would you like some tea? I can see that you are dressed as a warrioress. Some tea would be fine, thank you. You're most polite in your manner. This uh, serves you well. Oh, I'll have some tea. Oh, my, my name's Samir. Uh, I'm, I, I'm, I'm a librarian. Ah, um, he's scholar. he's he's about five two, very bushy beard, in a uh, nice looking robes, but he has a huge warhammer strapped to his back. Mm, I I see that uh, if the door becomes jammed, you have the right tool to open a door there. Oh no, I'm not a door opener. I'm a librarian. And the hammer, a family heirloom. Heirloom. Why didn't you leave it in your house? Because you never know when you need a hammer. So, do you, what, you are a librarian? Yes. Uh, very well. Um, he kind of seems a little bit sort of put off that you're a librarian. <laughs> <laughs> Not usually the adventuring type librarians. Oh, I, I love reading about fantasies that are created by people. It sounds like such an adventure. Ah, well, yes, fancies, and um, we shall explore it and, and cast the light of truth and reason upon the subject of our quest. Or I might just hit it with my hammer. Uh, quite. He um, readjusts his turban slightly as a, a small kind of act of uh, uncertainty and kind of gives you a sideways glance and waits for the third companion. 
My name is Farooz, Farooz Jalashmid of Geth. You speak of evil. The evils of this city are in plain sight, but I shall say no more until I get to know you better. Or perhaps then I shall say no more even at that time. But I have a crossbow, so I'm sure I can be of assistance. So you share a mind of uh, illuminating the unknown and that which may seem as superstitious? Ah, uh, I have superstitions, yes. They are things that uh, I wish to rid this city of. Mm-hmm. One of the things, at least. Well, I, I'll pour you a, a cup of uh, hibiscus tea and the librarian as well. And he says, and I say, well, huddle round, for I have a tale to tell that needs an answer. And I then tell them about uh, the strange and curious scroll I got from a scribe from another city telling of a magical portal under a stair in a print shop and then we're going to say that I visit this print shop and can confirm that there is indeed a stair and that in order to investigate it further that we need to enter the building under the cover of darkness and reveal the portal using lamplight or candlelight. And to that end, I have removed, and I place it on the table, the shop's bell. (laughs) Um, I sort of uh, look to the sky and cast an ear to hear the the night prayers of the city. It is almost time. I believe the shop owner will be in bed, and we must not disturb him and his wife, for they might be in the midst of some romantic toil. So we must do this using stealth. I am a singer by by trade, but I have also uh, some skills in stealth, so hopefully I can get the job done. Very good. Um, and we will uncover the truth of this and perhaps see what lies beyond the door. Perhaps it could be great treasure. Or perhaps we will finish tomorrow morning just knowing that the truth of... Uh, the object of this quest, uh, he doesn't really know what to say, he's never led a quest before, <laughs> is um, done. Very inspiring words. Very well. So we have Farouz. Yes. And we have... Suhad. And... Samir. Farouz the singer with the crossbow. <clears throat> you both seem to have weapons that don't really fit with your um, your professions. All singers need crossbows to protect themselves from uh, women... And their uh, <laughs> advances, and uh, men as well, of course. I would suspect only the good ones. Perhaps you could hum a few bars or sing, sing a few lines. Yes, I, uh, my family lives on an island uh, just off the coast here of, of Geth, uh, and I have a song about sharks. I could sing that for you. I would like to hear that. It goes, baby shark, do 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 baby <laughs> shark, do 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 you like it? It is delightful, though I don't think I will be throwing myself at you just yet. Good. That's why I have my crossbow. <laughs> so why do you carry that enormous weapon? The streets of Geth can be very dangerous at night, and it's, it's a family heirloom, as I was saying. So I travel with it to and from work, and as I had just finished work for the day, I uh, have it with me. Do you find yourself using it very often? Once or twice, muggers can be very persistent. Yes. I like the fact that it's a hammer. It's perhaps the hammer of justice that you meet upon any foes, robbers. What is your area of study in the library? I I, I put them on the shelves. Do you carry your hammer then? No, no, I leave it at my desk. Very well. Shall we go? Well, I think we shall. All right, so you, you while away a little bit more time until it's been dark for a couple of hours and make your way back to Eidolon Square. Much as before, it's quiet here. There's a few lights on, uh, candles or lamps burning in upstairs windows, but there's not much happening out on the street. Do you want me to give this door a gentle tap? With your hammer? Yes. I think this probably calls for a more no, delicate no, no, no. hand. I, I can climb in... To a window. How, what, what does the building look like? How many floors, levels are there? Are the windows on multiple? So there's, there's two stories there. There are uh, windows on the the upper floor. Mm-hmm. Some of them are dark and some of them there is lamplight flickering in the window. So there's definitely appears that 
there are people upstairs, but perhaps not in each room. Yes. No, we don't want to go upstairs. I believe Cashew was saying that um, there's people up there. Uh, let's just have a look at the front door. Is it locked? It does indeed appear to be locked. I, I was looking at a book about um, doors. Uh, what do the hinges look like? I look, examine the hinges. On the inside, wouldn't they? Um, yes, I suppose they would be on the inside of the door rather than on the outside. Hmm. Does anyone know how to open a door? I've yes, got... uh, I practice unlocking doors at home uh, for fun. <laughs> I wouldn't mind having a go. Let it be said that I have a dagger that you could use to perhaps uh, pry the door open with. Oh, that sounds good. Would you mind if I used it for a few minutes? Of course. Unfortunately, I haven't reached the L section of the library, so I don't know how to pick locks. Well, I'll give it a try. All right, make a dexterity roll, dexterity save. So that's a d20, and do I add my modifier? No, you no? want to roll under, equal under to my... or under your dexterity for this. Okay. I did, I rolled a nine, that's under my dexterity. All right, you, you're quite easily able to um, open the lock, but when you try the door, you think it's also barred on the other side. Bugger, I think it's barred. Can you lift the bar? I would try... I'll try using my hammer, but I want to try something first. Can I cast for shadowing? Sure. So you want to make your roll? That is a success. What does this look like? So, yeah, what, what is what is this spell for you? What is it? Does it conjure anything visible for no, anyone else to see? I suppose my shadow gets longer um, as it, it sort of envelops the door, uh, as I mutter under my breath. And so what question are you seeking an answer to here? Can I open this door quietly? With the right skills and tools, yes. There's no bell. It's, it's a matter of the bar being manipulated. So when you say bar, is that like a bolt or uh, like, like a, a... Like a, a wooden bar sitting across the back of the door in a, you know, in a bracket. If you had some piece of wire or something thin, well, could you lift it? I cannot... I've practiced a lot at unlocking doors. I've also practiced a lot at tinkering with mechanisms. If, if I could somehow get to the... Mechanism, I feel I could um, – mechan- is there some sort of mechanism that would hold the bar in place or would it – I don't know. what. It'd be, you think it would be fairly simple, like bar brackets yeah. on either side of the door. And the bar just sits in bar there. Bar sit in it so it just mm. doesn't That's, move. Yeah, it should be very simple with, with some tools. Did I tell you that I'm an architect? No. And often a part of the design of buildings is working out the security. Mm. And so I explain uh, some common types of door barring and how it – is uh, how it is fitted into doors mm, to help I see. you. What about the windows? Are they are none of them open. Yes. Yeah, so the the window the windows on the floor above appear um, to be uh, shuttered. Yeah. Rather than having glass in them, but um, the the downstairs window actually has glass in Doesn't it. Doesn't open. No. How like is it like a solid sheet of glass or? Yeah. Yeah. So it's a single piece of glass. It's probably three four feet. Hi. Okay, so have we got enough cloth that we could uh, muffle it? Muffle with? it and smash it and then mm. reach around. Is it just the. Or climb through. Yeah, yeah just climb through. You'd, yeah. have, you'd essentially have to just smash all the glass out. Enough well, glass out to make space to move through. I've got some iron spikes. I wonder if I could hammer, if we could use, use a cloth to dampen the sound, if I could hammer this iron spike in through the right spot, through the. the the gap in the door there, I might be able to dislodge the bar. Mm-hmm. Is there that any- might create a bit of a sound as if the bar falls to the other side. Is there any sign of the where the bar's, like, is there a, like a metal bolt on this side that's in the door frame that we could tap through to knock out the um, thing holding the bar? No, not that you can see. You would, I think, I think, I, I think uh, Kashaya, you probably would have seen this. It's literally on the wall. On either side of the door, there are just brackets and you can slip the bar, a, a wooden plank into effectively that just stops it pushing in. So what you could do, Farouk, is you, I like your idea, tap it in, the spike, and make a gap and then slowly, perhaps with the dagger, lift up mm. the plank or the bar yeah. to a certain height and then open the door. Push the door in whilst holding the dagger so it doesn't drop to the ground. Mm. Does this city have a sewer system? Uh, yes. Kashaya, when you were visiting earlier, did you happen to notice if they had a basement or a cellar? Did I notice that? No. 
This building doesn't seem to have a basement. No basement that I could see. Yeah, no. I don't know. Take my shirt off and just hold it up against the window and just sort of tap gently. With the aim of doing what? Trying to smash it quietly. Just before you do that, why don't you try opening the bar? Yes. Uh, another alternative. I wouldn't, maybe before I do that, is there a rear entrance? or? No, there wasn't one. The back of the shop backs onto a wall for, for a, build, a building on the other side, effectively. Can any of you climb? Perhaps we should be going I through can. an upper window. Yes, I could climb up there. I do have rope. Yes, but do we don't want to risk... Uh, That's where all the people are, though. Yes, the people are upstairs. Oh, save you. Shh. You're too unruly. We need one idea first at a time. Well, perhaps try your, we should try the idea with the Let's bar. tap in the mm. metal spike. And if that fails, then we'll move to breaking the window. Does someone have some cloth we can use to dull the... Well, What's I've that? already taken my shirt off. Here you go. Okay. So we'll give that a go. Is, uh, is Samir just, like, built? <laughs> yeah, he is ripped as all <laughs> f***. All right, so you want to try and get, uh, get a, a spike in to get a bit of... Clearance in the door, and then use a, a dagger or, or tool to. That's right. Give me the bar. I'd be thinking of using like yeah, some sort of tinkering with mechanism skill of some kind in order to. Sure. To uh, do you have as an assassin? Well, sorry, as a bard. As a bard, as a <laughs> singer. Yes. You have skill with mechanisms. Yes. All right. So you can roll against your full dexterity, and you can also do that with advantage because you had this um, discussion uh, with Kishaya about. Building security. So we roll two d20 and take the lowest. A 20 and a six. So I shall take the six and succeed. All right. So you manage quite neatly uh, and quietly to to put this plan into effect. The door swings open into the darkened store. Come in quickly and quietly. Now, who has a lamp or a torch or a candle? Oh, I've got a lantern. With some oil and a tinderbox. No, we must move very quietly. We're not here to rob the store owner. No. No. But it's so messy. Can I at least clean a little? I think the library keeps you quite fit enough. <laughs> Mixing up and down. <laughs> oh, that bookshelf should be over there. And th- those large frames should be in that corner. Maybe you could come back during the daylight hours <laughs> and make those suggestions. That could be your side quest for another day. <laughs> Kashaya, lead on. Where are we going? I point the way. All right, so Kashaya leads you through the door behind the counter into the workshop. It's a fairly cramped space, salted with all of you in there. And I'll lead them to the door under the stair. All right. So you see, as you all see, a fairly plain, uh, plain wooden door uh, leading to what appears to be a small storage area. Bring the lamp closer. It should... Shine with a Cerulean blue light, if my friend's dream is to be believed. Do we see any such runes? So you bring, what's your light source? A lantern. So you bring a lantern close to the door, but there's no there's no change to the door. It remains a simple wooden door. Is it not supposed to be candlelight? Yes, yes. Do we have around. a candle? I thought we would have... Quietly look around for candles. <laughs> I'll look around for a candle. Yeah, candle. <laughs> There are some candles in the in the workshop. Oh, I'll that gra- was I'll, lucky. I'll grab a candle. So you light the candle and you bring it to the door. Remains a door. Well, Can I use foreshadowing to work out what is required to open this door? So this really only tells you about danger. Oh, okay. Not just what you can do. Kashaya, can you think think back to the message? What are we missing? Something? What happened? Uh, he so in the dream, your friend walked up to the door with candlelight, and then what happened? So. In his description, where the door was located, he needed candlelight to see it. It was dark. Is there any, like, the dark mic- spots in this, yes. other the- than this air- this door? Look at a different part of the stair. Perhaps it is behind this door or somewhere else. Scan the area. Maybe it needed to be a certain time of night. Is it, is it dark? Uh, it's pretty dark it's pretty now. Dark? Oh, maybe. Perhaps I open the it was door. just a dream. When you open the door, inside is a small storage space, somewhat cobwebbed, and looks like it doesn't get much use. But against the back wall of the cobwebbed and dusty space, where the ceiling is highest, stands an improbable door, three feet wide by six feet tall, painted cerulean blue with gold leaf in swirling patterns that glister in your candlelight. Here it is. <laughs> Found it. <laughs> Oh, but this, this place needs to be cleaned up. Look at these cobwebs. Oh, 
Someone pass me a dust cloth. <laughs> oh, right. Here, so here it is. There you go. My friend Samir, I think you lack central coherence in this particular moment in time. <laughs> We're here for the door. Again, this is going to be a side quest too for another oh, time. Oh, 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 okay. Um, can, I, can I at least get rid of the cobwebs? I quickly dust the cobwebs. <laughs> you, you dust the cobwebs, but disturb a little dust. Make it make a health save. Oh god, to make sure I don't sneeze. Yeah. <laughs> that was a three. Alright. You your nose is irritated by the dust, but you managed to stifle the sneeze. I don't want to take him out at night on a stealth mission ever again. He stays at home <laughs> next time. I, I open the door, this cerulean door if I can. Yeah, so it opens by means uh, of an elegant handle in the shape of an arching swan's neck. The door opens inwards. What do you want to do? I do believe this is the the prophetic element of one of the key principles of Geth. My friend's dream has now become a reality. Shall we venture forth? What exactly happened after he went through the door? He went into some dream world, didn't he? Yes. Yes, that is it. And he survived it okay. <laughs> yes, he lived to write to me about That's it. That's good. Oh, I suppose I'll lead the way, Kashira. It was a land of dreams and a strange sewer. As you say that, you, in fact, all of you notice a smell coming from beyond the door. A somewhat acrid and unpleasant smell of effluent. Oh, oh, oh dear, uh, there's someone needs to clean in there. <laughs> <laughs> It would seem so. And I smile at you. Lead the way. <laughs> did, did, did you bring a mob? They might have some in there. Good, good point. Let's, let's go. I, I lead the way. <laughs> at the very least, we might need to work which implements we need to clean it. Uh, you need to clean it. Yes. Let's get on with it. The door beneath the stairs opens into a room that couldn't possibly be there, given the layout of the shop. The floor of the room is faded tile, chipped and buckled. To the east is a heavy wooden door that opens outward from this room based on the arrangement of the hinges. Mm. To the west, there is an arched exit leading into a larger space beyond. Do you all make your way into the room? Yes. And do, yeah. you, do you close the door to the print shop? And do you close the door to under the stairs? We close the door to the under the stairs. Can yeah. we all fit in that little room? Sorry, the storage room or the room the beyond? Storage the room, yeah. No, you can't all fit in there. Some of you would have to go into the pass through the door the cerulean door in order to close the door of the storage room. I think we close the storage room door as soon as we are all in the room, but not cerulean door. Do we keep that open? Mm, I would, maybe we should keep that open. Best to leave it. Is there, was there anything, you said there was stuff in the um, storage area. Is there anything we could prop the door open and keep it propped open with? Oh, you could find something in the workshop. Mm. Okay. A wood block or something. Yeah, I'll find a wood block to keep the door propped find open. Prop it open with a lewd print. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right, you prop the door open. What would you like to do? So you, there's an arch to the north, was it? To the west. To the west. And, and then a heavy the... door to the east. Do we want to mess with the door or do we want to go yeah, through the arch? Just already through open. the arch. So the arch is to the west, right? Correct. Um, I'll go over and examine, look through it. Have you got a light source? I've got the candle. All right, so with the candle, you can't see that much beyond the archway. Uh, it appears to be a large domed room floor covered in a filthy straw and there's a stench of decay as you I'm going to cast put your face through the door. Okay, roll to control. That's an eight. That's a success. What do you want to know about? Is it dangerous entering this room? You don't think it's dangerous entering this room, but this room is dangerous. Okay. There's something dangerous about this room ahead, peoples. Oh, okay. I will um, take out my crossbow and notch a bolt. My friends, do you have the, that lantern? so that we might plumb the depths of the darkness with it. I do. I will hold it whilst you have your eagle eye to scan for threats. Right. And you, Suhad. If they're yes. going to use the lantern to more, more light, I'm going to take my wire off my back and just wield okay. it two-handed. I'll pass the, lan- the candle to someone. I've got a bastard sword. <laughs> I don't think I'm well, we drawing hmm. that. Suhad, you stand by my side. Yes, I will do if- that. The light is extinguished, then we are all blind. This is true and bad news. Let us uh, move in carefully. You move into the room, you can see that it is a circular room with a dome that rises 
to 40 feet above. In the centre of the room there is an elaborate marble fountain. The western wall is taken up by massive wooden doors, one of which has collapsed. Two sets of stairs on the north and south walls of the room lead up to a balcony with a balustrade 15 feet up. Dangling from the balustrade by ropes around their necks are three masked and robed figures. Hmm. They've been hanged. Are they moving? They are not. Perhaps they are criminals of some sort. I wonder what rules and laws there are in the dream world that could lead to this sort of consequence. Can we reach them from the balustrade, balustrades, from the balcony? You could. You'd have to, to pull them up. You could also reach reach up to them from the, the ground level. And just yank. <laughs> you try and pull, them, pull them down if you want to. You could, you could grab them from there. Let's, let's try and get one down. I poke one with my hammer. Okay. Can you make a dexterity save for me, please? Oh, yes. Oh, that was a two. So you step uh, by one of the corpses to poke it with your hammer, and you manage narrowly to avoid a bear trap pinned in the straw underneath the corpse. Oopsie. Yikes. Okay, we trap. should. Trap, goodness. I'm just going to start. Yeah, I'll start poking around. I'll go see if I can find a broom. Is there, has anyone seen a broom? There's no brooms. Plenty of straw. <laughs> I'm going to take the time to craft one. <laughs> Well, I have a cane, a walking stick in ooh, one ooh. hand and my crossbow, a light crossbow in the other, and I'll use my walking stick to... Oh, can I borrow your cane? Uh, no. No? It's mine. <laughs> uh, I was going to tie some hay to it and make a broom. <laughs> yeah, it belonged to my grandfather. I don't lend it. Oh, yes, my... He my would like it if I lent it. My hammer bro- belonged to my grandmother. That's mm. all very nice. I'm going to approach one of these hanging things making sure I tap my um, sword on the ground in front of me so as not to trigger any traps. We'll make a dexterity saving throw. How come? <laughs> do I get an advantage or something? <laughs> no. So what are, you, what are you using to try and find this? Well, I'm using my sword. All right. Chanking it in the straw. All right. So you you don't don't get caught in a bear trap. However, your sword does, oh. uh, and it the blade snaps as the bear trap <laughs> closes on it. <laughs> Oh, shit. <laughs> I look at the shoddy workmanship of it, throw it on the ground, and... Um, you still might my... be able to use it as a slashing short sword. I don't... <laughs> don't but throw it's it terrible. away. <laughs> don't throw it away. If he throws it away, I'll just pick it up. Uh, no, no, I'll, I'll, I'll hang on to it. Listen, mm. listen to me. I have a spell that in which I can fashion an iron servant that could perhaps have some sort of spade face and legs that could go and tidy up this area, pushing all the traps and the straw over into a corner where we do not need to walk. What wonderful magics. I want to see it. Okay. I'll try and cast Magic work in the dream world, do you think? It does. So when the bear trap goes off and snaps your sword, it makes quite a loud noise, steel smashing against steel and the snapping of the blade echoes around this place. I fear we might have alerted anything nearby. Mm-hmm. You think? Can we hide in this place? This is a big open room with lots of straw on the ground, isn't it? I mean, it's, it's, a fountain. It's, it's otherwise quite I mean, it's dark if you don't have your lantern out, of course. You must realise that anything coming into the room would also suffer the hazards of the traps. Unless they knew where they were. Unless they knew where they were. <laughs> so perhaps we should move them. But we don't know where they are. As you're talking... Um, and discussing what's happening, you hear a distant um, piping sound. Perhaps we should just leave. Which um, ways out are there? There's the west from here, isn't there? Uh, so you could go west or you could go up the stairs. Where's the piping sound coming from? You think probably from the west? Let's the go up only- the stairs. <laughs> <laughs> okay. do, we, uh, do we just want to use the bodies? We could throw the bodies around the room until they set off all the traps. Why do we need to set off the traps again? I don't know, to make it safe. What about the spell that Kashaya wants? Yeah. He could um, cast. Yes, Even yeah. now I'm thinking about fashioning it into some giant giant fan and that would blow the straw away and reveal the traps. I have the ability to do sort of something like that, but um, it's an element of wind and... Well, whatever you do, can you just do it now, please? I think something's coming. I think it would be, <laughs> be good to perhaps make this area secure with your spell of wind. Clear the straw so that we might benefit from the traps. So you're going to try and summon a storm element. Yes. Is that right? That is a failure. Miscast. You failed to control your spell. So. There's chance of it being, so the spell succeeds, but. Um, no, no, no. You need to roll a miscast. 
And oh, so it's a D D eight. Uh, yes, it is a D eight for miscast. That is a one. Can you roll? Yep, a D one thousand. So the effect of this is you cast a different spell on a different target in addition to your original spell, which works as normal. Six hundred and seven. So I summon my elemental. You do your spell becomes corrupted? However, what does that mean? It means that when he tries to cast it, he will lose attribute points. Oh, in order to do so. The other spell you cast. Hmm. <laughs> oh, hmm. Do you want me to re-roll? No. No. All right, so you summon your storm elemental. As well, just nearby, pops into existence a large beetle with the head of a man. Uh, okay. You meant to do that? Uh, yes. Yes, I was. Hello, man beetle thing. <laughs> hmm? What? Where am I? Could you pick up all the straw for me? And and Storm Elemental, blow the st- straw away into the corner for him to pick up. Uh, I guess. <laughs> what, what did I cast? <laughs> you cast the spell Minion, which summons uh, a <laughs> human-sized or smaller creature. <laughs> okay. Wicked. Uh, which lasts uh, for not very long. But it's enough It's enough time for this storm elemental made of clouds, rain, hail, and lightning. So you'd make it take basically the... Blow the, the wind, wind. Yeah. Storm clouds and blowing. So the straw is blown away, and this strange beetle with the, this human-looking head kind of wanders around, <laughs> um, vomiting something up, but as it, when it touches the straw, it just catches fire. <laughs> it just starts burning the straw away uh, with this strange oozing vomit. Excellent job. How long does it last? The, the storm element. elemental lasts for 10 minutes. Yep. The minion lasts for the same amount of time. Well, I guess your way was more effective than mine. <laughs> How many traps are there? So there's just there was just one bear trap beneath each of the bodies. Why are they under the bodies? I suppose mm. stop people from inspecting them. Well, we'll move the traps, I suppose. And Why do we need to move the traps? To look at these bodies. Perhaps we could trigger the traps and... Um, well, you've triggered one. Us. Yes, well. We can untrigger them and put them strategically about the room in case we are harried by some sort of foe. Mm. That's yeah. coming from the west, wasn't it? The traps yes. are, could be useful. Yeah. Mm. But they're also heavy. Yeah, yeah, these would be like two, you'd have to carry them in two hands, the large encumbering items. Why don't we just set them around here and we can use this as some sort of staging area. I'm going to examine the bodies. I'm going to take a trap and mm-hmm. uh, set it by the western entrance and, and and flop a bit of um straw over it. Okay. So do you want to try and fetch the body down from downstairs or do you want to go upstairs and try and pull that up over the balustrade? How high up is it? The body? Mm. Uh, its feet are probably about five feet from the ground. Right. So it's Toes are like near my nose. Mm. We'll have to go upstairs. Yeah, does someone want to go and lower them down or cut them down? I'll go. A hanging body is something we would see in the city of Geth? Uh, not usually just mm. hanging around in a room, no. I mean, people are sometimes hanged as punishment, yeah. yes. I just, I'm not really sure why we're, why are we, what's the point of this? Like, they've been hanged, why do we need to, what do you want to see if it's your Aunt Sue or something? Like, well, we're here to uncover truth. Mm. Okay. And clues and describe. Perhaps my friend will have another dream and he will describe three hanged people. Just very <laughs> worried there's uh, something coming. Well, it's, the entrance is trapped now. Mm. At least we'll get fair warning. And if nothing else, I can use their clothes as rags to wipe down a, a clean up messes. It's bad luck to use the clothes of the dead to clean with. I'm going to go upstairs and try and cut one down. They've got hoods on, haven't they? Or like masks, we can't really see They have masks. So we can't see their faces. No. So you go upstairs? You're going up the north stairs or the south stairs? North. All right. So when you get up there, you can see um, that uh, just above the land of the stairs, there's a doorway heading north. You can also see across the balcony that there are doorways heading southwest and southeast off this kind of balcony area. Okay. Anyway, you go to one of the bodies and you can cut it down easily enough. Yep, um, snip. Drops to the floor below. Okay. There you go. With a thump against the cold stones, or tiles rather. I remove the mask. They each wear fine uh, but bloodied robes and they have elegant beaked masks like plague doctors at a Venetian carnival. 
the the face below is essentially looks human, um, white haired, uh, and quite um, sharp features and sharp cheekbones. The body you would guess from looking at it, although you'd have to lie down next to it to check, you would guess it is substantially taller than you. I'm pretty short. What's their complexion? Um, relatively pale, kind of ashen, but, I mean, the, the blood's flowed from there. I mean, their bodies are starting to decay. Yeah. There's not much blood, much blood in their faces giving them colour. The, the smell is not pleasant. Anything in their pockets? No pockets. They're just wearing robes. We're going to do this for all three. If so, hurry up. (laughs) Okay, just the one will do. Uh, I'm just going to put the plague mask on. (laughs) The mask doesn't smell great. There's nothing in there. They put no scent in it. I take it off and drop it. Okay. Did you just try on the mask? Yeah. It's bad luck to wear the masks of the dead. Something ill shall befall you, I assure you. In a hushed sort of loud whisper, I call up to Suhad. What else can you see from up there? Doorways. Perhaps we should take one. Did you say there was also a fountain in this room? Yes, in the centre of the room. That. Is there anything in the fountain? Water? No, the fountain is dry. It's an elaborate carving of marble of a nude with bound arms, which when it was running, your architectural skills would tell you the water probably flowed from the mouth of this figure into the central basin. Okay, let's go up then. I think we should keep moving, yeah. Okay, well, I'll just say, yeah. All right. Yes, let let us go. I should like to come back and sketch this if we were to rest. So we go up the follow up up the stairs. All right. Pick an exit. So does the is there a, like a loop around this room from upstairs or? Yeah. So this the the, the entire way around. Okay. And so this this balcony is at about uh, fifteen feet up. So it was northwest, southwest, 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 no. and north, wasn't there? No, north. Southwest and southeast. Okay. All right. How about we go to the north? The doorway to the north leads into a bedchamber about um, about 10 feet by 15 feet in size. A four-poster bed stands in the room with a gutted mattress and a few tatters of shredded bedclothes. Attached to the wall, there is a tall mirror that has been smashed to pieces. Next to it stands a once fine armoire now scratched by claw marks and ruined. Closed? Mm. Uh, yes, it is closed. Do you want to use your sword, your short, rather shortened sword, <laughs> to open it? Sure, why not? I'll creak it open. All right. Uh, there is nothing visible inside. So there's a bed. Does that mean even people in the dream world need to sleep? Yeah. Maybe. Do they come to the real world when they the, do so? Yeah. I mean, are we? We're not technically asleep, though, are we? No. But I wonder what would happen if we fell asleep in the dream world. So, Kashai, do you know anything about the Dreamlands? Is it something you ever would have studied, or would anyone else have, for that matter? Would I have found any books on it in the library, in the D section? Maybe, if you were looking for them. Currently not in my on my reading list, is about dreams and so on, but... I, uh, you said you I meditated did. for a week on, on this. Does that mean you just thought in your own head about it, or did you read about it as well? Ah, oh, that's, that's right, yes. Um I've, in terms of, I would have looked up some information on prophetic dreams and uh, perhaps their meaning, also uh, other common phenomena about uh, the waking world and also learnt about lucid dreaming. Well, in, in your studies, you would have learned a number of things about the dreamlands. Ordinarily, uh, it is said that the dreamlands are a place that some people go when they sleep and dream, that that's where their dreams occur. Ordinarily, one can only come to the dreamlands as a dreamer. It is very unusual that you can enter the dreamlands in your physical form. The dreamlands are supposedly full of all kinds of wonders and wishery. Normally, when you enter as a dreamer, you cannot bring that back with you. The opportunity before you now is that you can bring things back from the dreamlands. According to the studies and treatises that you read, the last time something like this happened was a hundred years ago when a portal to the Dreamlands appeared in the middle of Lake Wooling in the Jaya in the kingdom of the Chatelaine of Storms. At that time, so the story goes, a hero known as Garanax, the champion of the Chatelaine of Storms, went into the Dreamlands and returned with a mated pair of monstrous velvety crows that serve now uh, uh, served as the breeding pair from which her dread storm riders' mounts were bred. That door 
was open for six months and one day. I wonder how long our door has been open. We only just opened it, didn't we? No, it was already there, wasn't it? But was does that count as opened or? I don't know. In existence mm. for six months and a day. The other thing that you did read about out of interest as the question was asked is that the stories are that the people of the dreamlands go to the dreamlands of the dreamlands when they dream. <laughs> but there is such a place as the dreamlands created by the dreamers who live in the dreamlands. What about the dreamers in the dreamlands of the exactly, dreamlands? Exactly, yeah. Do they go to another dreamland? It's dreamlands all the way <laughs> down, friend. There are many layers. Mm. Have you ever had a dream having something in your grasp, enjoying it, and then awakening to find you lying in your bed alone, wishing you could go back and seize that which you had dreamt of? This, my friends, is the opportunity before us. This is a very unexpected and yet uh, fortuitous occurrence. But where there are dreams, there are also nightmares. We must be cautious. So in this place, I I will find a privy quickly and effectively instead of having to spend hours without ever finding one and then having to go in public somewhere with people looking at me. I'm not sure if that's how it works. Ah, so I I always dream. I've found as a bedroom and I... um, uh, I, I Execution room of some sort. Mm. What else have you dreamed of, though? Um, I've dreamed of uh, flying upon the uh, back of a, a winged manticore up through the clouds above the city. Ah, that was a dream. I have dreamt of fabulous feasts, of golden-haired beauties that the nobles buy, and riches, discovering riches, but more importantly, discovering fabulous books Coming across them, not new, but discovering them in second-hand bookshops. (laughs) You dream of second-hand bookshops? Yes, and uh, discovering bargains and being able to purchase them. That's very interesting. Perhaps we should move on. Yes, I've also had many dreams of being pursued by some terrible beast, and uh, I fear that may happen here, so I would like to move on. Don't want to stay in the same spot for too long. Are there exits to this room? Nope. Well, other than the door you came in through. So, southeast or southwest? Yeah. Before we leave, is there? A, can I just investigate this um, uh, container? What did you say the it was? Armoire. The armoire. A little yes. bit. Is there any um, false bottoms or anything like that that I could? What uh, What does the assassin say about searching? That assassin. Really what are you talking matter, about? He's a bard. You, you can't hear the game master. <laughs> <in> character. <laughs> Ah, uh, nothing really. I can disarm traps, um, tinker with mechanisms, a few other things like that. If you go, and, if you would like to spend a turn searching, you need to make a dexterity saving throw. Okay. Also, I've got a special ability. When you spend a turn searching, you always find hidden things in a dungeon of your level or lower. All right, but you're not searching the armoire. I'll search the room while he searches the armoire. Yes, uh, 12, and I needed a a 13 or so. Well, there is nothing secret in the room, but there is a secret compartment in the armoire. Mm. Inside the secret compartment, hidden in the base of the armoire, there is a gorgeously carved wooden cask, which appears to open, um, to be able to be twisted open. Right, I'll I'll twist it open, see if it comes apart. Before you do that, stop. And I'll cast um, foreshadowing. Okay. It's a nine. All right. There is no danger associated with opening it's the It's safe to open. What spell is that you have? Uh, just uh, just uh, an ancient ritual of the law that assists me in uh, understanding if something is dangerous to me or those close to me. Oh, well, thank you, friend. Uh, I shall twist open the container. Inside, there is a golden effigy of a web. Ooh, look, everyone. I wonder if it's magical. If not, does it uh, be worth a pretty penny? Or a pretty whatever denomination of currency. The casket would be worth something as well, wouldn't it? Yes, it would be. It would be valuable. Uh, has anyone got any spare carrying space to I carry do. these items? I'm, I'm pretty full myself. Mm-hmm. Okay, here you go. Very good findings. This We're off to a good start. Yes. Um, so, yes, were we going southeast or southwest? Uh, southwest, I suppose. Lead on then, uh, ma'am. Hard. <laughs> Let's head that way then. All right, so southwest? Sure. All right. The room you come to here is very similar. It's another bedchamber of similar dimensions. 
the walls of this room are decorated in the tattered remains of shredded crimson arrases, which are um, tapestries. There is a bed with a gutted mattress fouled with white, what appears to be white feces. There's also a nightstand in this room and there's a small smashed mirror with a quite attractive silver frame sitting on the nightstand. At the foot of the bed, there is a chest which is open and empty. I look at the feces. Is it guano? Uh, no. I would like to have a little look at the frame. Does that look, um, aside from being very heavy, does it look valuable? The frame? Uh, so this is only a, um, like a hand mirror, so it's, oh, not, okay. it's not terribly heavy. Uh, yeah, the, the frame is probably worth 20 ciphers or so. It's, it's a quite finely made mirror. silver frame. It's just that the mirror itself is smashed. Yeah. Well, it will go well with the one I already have. <laughs> I'll take it with me. Have you noticed a pattern, Suhad? Yes. The lots mirrors. of smashed mirrors. Some ink perhaps cannot bear to see its reflection. It's quite possible. Fortunately, I happen to have a hand mirror with me. Ah. Make sure it's at hand in case you need it. Quick. Um, I suppose there's no point searching this room. Or do you want to search again? It's empty. Mr. Cashier. Should I have a look in the opened chest? Have a quick have a look and see if there's any um, hidden compartments. Okay. It's worked once. Mm, I rolled too high this time, though. Well, you don't believe there are any hidden compartments. No, let's go look somewhere else. Okay, south east. Are you sure you don't want to inspect the feces? You could try doing the taste I had to look at it. It wasn't, a, it, not, it wasn't guano, so... White feces would suggest it is for old... I had a look. I didn't have a sniff. Is it wet? I didn't touch it either. Well, that's no, it's a serious question. If it's... Yeah, how about you stick your hand in it? Fine, I will. <laughs> it is. It appears to be quite old and dried out. <laughs> All right, so that could be anything. This room, these rooms must be triggering your compulsion to clean. Yes, but I'm, I'm, yes, yeah, yep. There's no, no, no cleaning products nearby. I'm fine. Let's move on. All right, so you're moving to the southeast, southeast room. room. Southeast room. Okay. One. You will be. You were shocked to discover that it is another bedchamber. <laughs> what? I don't believe Again, it. Again, a four-post bed with gutted mattress, a, a tall smashed mirror, but no armoire in this room. There is also in this room white feces, but there is a smell coming from it, and it looks fresher than that in the other room. Oh, that's alarming. That's weird. Some sort of latrine. Got to be some sort of bird, hasn't it? What else makes a piping sound? Someone with a pipe. You think someone who <laughs> craps white and plays a pipe. Do we know of any creatures who uh, crap white, as you put it? <laughs> oh, I don't know. I don't we're, know. We're, we're in a dream. We, we don't know what exists here. Mm. The frame Could here. be uh, one of those mythical beasts that turns people to stone when you look at it. Or, uh, I don't know, cyclops. A cyclops. I don't know, I'm just making it up. Just spitballing here. Started with C. I read the C, read the C section. Listen, guys, this is a safe space. No idea is a bad <laughs> idea. We're just, we're just brainstorming here, all right? Very good. Um, this mirror, that looks valuable too. Uh, so this is another one of the wall-attached mirrors, uh, uh, which okay. is broken. I poke and prod at the mirror to see if it's like a secret door. No secret door pieces of the mirror fall Tinkle on the ground. <laughs> the two stairways they lead up to this uh, yes. balcony. Which and we'll check all the doors. Off, there was only three doors. <laughs> three, three, doors three doors. Three bedrooms. So I guess we're going back down and to the west. West, 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 or, west. or east. Well, we came from. Yes, we the came east. from the east, but there's a door going further east. Yeah. From the chamber you started in, there is a door going east, and from the domed chamber, there is a door going west, which has a sound coming from it. Well, we. Which way do you want to go? Sorry, I'm the leader here. Um, I <laughs> yes. hired you to lead on. <laughs> and we've just been leading you by, along by your nose. <laughs> I've been testing your initiative and decision-making capabilities. I think it is time for us to venture through the west doors. Okay, lead the way then. I'm holding the lamp. <laughs> <laughs> I will lead the way. I'm the strong one here. All right, so you're going to journey, journey through the fallen door to the west. Yeah, okay, let's go west. Me and Sue had um, head west. Okay, you head through the western door out of the domed chamber. You find yourselves in a room about 20 feet north-south, 30 feet east-west in dimension. It has a tiled floor and there are two red paths tiled into the floor that intersect in the centre of the room. One of the paths heads into a corridor to the north 
the other heads into a passageway to the west. Along the south side of the tiled path against the wall, it's a long table with metal legs and a finely worked heavy marble top. Smashed ceramic bowls and detritus litter the tabletop and the floor beneath. Hanging from the ceiling on either side of the passageway to the north are two brass sensors. In the northwest corner of the room, there is a small metal box. But that isn't on the path. No. And from where you're coming from, there is no tiled red path. Oh, okay. It, it, uh, it's at, it runs at a 90-degree angle. And doesn't of, get, get to where we are. No, because so those paths sort of intersect and stop at the centre of this room. So it's, it's almost like a red carpet sort of deal. Yeah, it appears to be some kind of marking. Mm. So there's a chest on this table? Chest in the corner. You can go have a look if you want. Well, it's not a chest, it's a metal box. Okay, I'm going to poke it with my hammer. Poke it open with my hammer from the side. You you can't open it. It appears to be locked. Um, bardy person <laughs> who seems to be good with locks and haven't heard sing yet. Baby shark. Do, 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 do. Baby shark. Song. Yes. Uh, oh wait, I, I did hear that song. To, oh, I'd love to have a go at this one. Looks like a challenge. See if I can. Where's that dagger? I'll use a metal spike dagger. See if I can jimmy the lock, so to speak. All right. So it's um. It's not a it's not a particularly large box. It's sort of um, probably one one foot by two thirds of a foot, but uh, it is decorated in the metal with a, an image of a beaked mask. Hmm. It's a beaked mask again. Hmm. All right. Well, make a roll to open the lock. Oh, it's pretty. The lock's pretty good. Uh, these tools aren't aren't uh, very useful. I need something finer. Sorry, I can't get it open. You're unable to open the lock. You can't. There's something in this box. It's not empty. You can tell, although it's not incredibly heavy. I mean, I could smash it in with my hammer. May as well. I mean, really, put, the, put the hat, put that, um, put that spike in the lock, and I'll just smash, smash the spike into the lock. Would that work? Potentially. You might damage what's inside the box, but give it a go. I reckon. You'll cer- almost certainly damage the box, which itself may have some value. It's made out of <clears throat> silver, did you say? Or? No, it's um, probably, uh, you would guess, brass. I'm going to try and Before smash it. Before you do, to think that this chest has been sitting here unmolested. Well, it's locked. It is locked, but why hasn't it been taken or why hasn't someone tried to break it open before? Has Don't anyone know. been looting this place? I think it's just because people come here in their dreams and... How do you know those three bodies weren't people who lived in those three bedrooms? Scratches on the Amor, the, the Amor were from one of them hiding in there and whatever strung them up is what that piping sound was. It might not be interested in material possessions. It might be just... Kashaya, I thought this was why we were here, to investigate, to find things, to take things back. Is there something I... Or have you got some other plan that or did i misunderstand i'm i'm just thinking that perhaps we should just take the box on the way out can i attempt to pick it is that do you have tools for picking with no uh, then, <laughs> no not without tools well i mean i can use a dagger or something it's not gonna work i, t- I use my attempted picking method yeah i think you probably should oh no. i don't know no, so you're gonna take- ferocity uh, no no you know no you need to roll under your dexterity You'll be able to get it open. It's a question of whether you do it without damaging things. That's 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 no. <laughs> okay, so you you manage to you strike this um, spike. It was, it was one over. Strike the spike with your hammer, and it definitely busts the lock. The lock is not going to ever close again. <laughs> uh, and you knock this thing, and as you do, you hit it, and a puff of powder comes out of the top of the out of the top of this box uh, with it's a powder box. Slight. There's some smell to it, an incensey smell, but old and, and with very little scent left. Perhaps it's grandma. Okay. What was that? What was that? Po- was that I thought that was poison or something for a minute there. Are you okay? I am fine. Um, I should have probably cast um, the spell I was done the using earlier on it. A bit of cat, forethought was not used in this case. Um, I opened the chest. <laughs> All right, there are several ruined bricks of incense in here. Oh. <laughs> okay. I guess the good thing about the incense is that, well, if you wreck it, it I guess it would still burn. Mm-hmm. And what about those sensors? I sort of my eyes point to them. Well, maybe we try putting some in there and light one. Now, in- incense uh, can be useful for meditation or for 
making a foul area less. Or for warding off things. Yeah, indeed. Perhaps we need, how big are the sensors? Fist size? Slightly larger? They, they look like the incense is probably designed to go in them. Hmm. It's obviously some sort of ceremonial pathway, perhaps. Could I have a look at the table, please? Yes, you may. So on the table, um, amongst the detritus are things like broken ornamental fans, painted noisemakers, ribbons of bells and tambourines. They're all basically damaged or um, starting to, you know, this um, the ribbon is starting to rot away and been affected by damp and time. I pick up one of the tambourines and start tapping it on my Please hand. Please stop. You make some noise with a tambourine. It's quite unpleasant. Or they're quite kind of rusty and they're not no longer sitting properly. The, so these the, the, the bells or the, the metal parts of it make this horrible, janky, clanking mm. noise. So it's all instruments, basically. Uh, all yeah, sort of uh, kind of parade, parade type stuff. accoutrement, yes. So, yeah, people come through the door to the west, right? And, um, yeah, grab parade gear here and head through the censored door to the north, I suppose. Perhaps we should light the sensors and it may reveal a path. Let's Perhaps. try it. May as well. The smoke yep. might well, blow a certain way. I scoop some of the broken incense into one of the sensors and get my candle and light it. All right. So the, the incense burns poorly. It's very old. It's lost much of its effect. Uh, it produces some small amount of smoke, but very faint smell. Nothing special seems to happen when you light it. Hmm. Do you think we should head to the west and see... Well, I mean, it seems to me that you would go through the doorways that is flanked by the the sensors. That's right, isn't it? The sensors are um, They're flanking, flanking the, northern the northern corridor, yes. Yeah, so it seems like the path heads from the west. Should we head west and see w- where these people are coming from? Let us do that. To the west. So you head out from the archway to the west and along a small corridor that's probably about 30 feet long. Continues to be marked in the tile floor with the red tiles. Beyond the archway at the end of the corridor, there is another room of similar dimension to the the previous one, about 20 feet north-south, 30 feet east-west. The red tile path runs uh, from the eastern entrance of this room and turns 90 degrees south through an ornately carved arch uh, at a 90 degree angle. There is also uh, an exit uh, in the western wall. Uh, There is a marble bar on the north side of the room with ruined cabinets behind it. Iron lanterns are set into the south wall. Check out the bar, I reckon. Mm. Mm -hmm. Do a search. Ten minute search, one turn. Sure. All right. So uh, as you search through, you can see that the contents uh, of the cabinets behind the bar have been smashed and lie in a pile behind the bar. The pile is fouled by more white feces. However, looking through the debris, you do find two fine pewter drinking goblets with leering faces and twinkling agate eyes. You also find among the debris black feathers. Are they big? They look like raven's feathers. Storm crow feathers. They're not large enough to be these reputed creatures that were brought back, but... Perhaps they had babies. Fledglings. So do we want to go west, and, or do we want to continue along the path with the red marking? Something beckons me about the, uh, this procession along the red path. Hmm, OK. Go south. All right, you continue south through the archway. The arch is carved with decorations of masked performers, some stilted, others breathing flames or juggling knives, while other unmasked figures flee before them or kneel in misery. (laughs) Okay. The red path continues running down the tiled floor between four sets of richly carved alcoves in the corridor heading south. Uh, As you enter this corridor, you can hear a high-pitched giggling from beyond the darkness at the south end of the corridor. I cast foreshadowing. Okay. Is it dangerous to enter this corridor? Make a roll. Oh, yeah, I've got to do that, don't I? <laughs> yes. Yep, that's a pass. That's 12. Your uh, divinations do not detect any danger in the corridor. What about beyond? Can I do another roll for the beyond? No, not not until you get okay. further so, down the corridor. I do not sense the any danger in this corridor. So you said there was um four sets of alcoves? Yes. So there are there's an alcove on each side of the corridor and yep. there's four pairs. You gotcha. Can we see into any? If you enter the corridor well, up to the 
where the alcoves are, you can look into them. I've been told it's not dangerous, so sure, I'll go to the first one. <laughs> Trust the crazy librarian. <laughs> On the western alcove, there is a carving of an old man richly carved into the stone of the alcove. The old man is naked and withered and pulls a skein of thread from his open mouth with one hand, untangling it with the other. In the eastern alcove, the threads which run from the other alcove across the ceiling descend from above into a city scene at dawn. The threads are each attached to one of the figures depicted in this city scene. Some of the figures wake leisurely in onion-domed rooms and verdant gardens that rise above, while below others work in small courtyards and narrow shops. Okay. So, like the threads of fate sort of thing? Yeah. I don't know. So the thread's coming out of his mouth, he's untangling it, and it runs, runs across the roof. Yes, runs up above him across the, the it's almost ceiling like the, of the The corridor. word of law? I don't know. Creating with his imagination? Don't know. Is it magic or okay, creating? Um, I'll move up to the next outlot of alcoves and see what's in them. In the western alcove of this pair, a cluster of masked marionettes peek out like mischievous children from behind the robes of a tall female figure uh, with six beaked crow-like heads. The marionettes drag their strings behind them. On the eastern alcove, crowds of tall and lithe figures with flowers in their hair stream down a hilly street towards a set of massive doors decorated with an image of the same many-headed woman. Is there any, like, um, would I have any knowledge of any of these things from my time in the library? can roll intelligence, but half intelligence, try and roll under half intelligence. This would be very obscure because it's Dreamland's law, not uh, law about the waking world. That is a fail. Keep moving down, I guess. What's the third one? Given the um, design of this, uh, this underground, um, I don't even know if we're underground, um, of this building... Have I seen any sort of designs like in uh, mosques or uh, temples that might suggest a certain flow of the the purpose of this this building? It seems like um, it has had some sort of religious make uh, make an intelligence roll. Right on. All right. Um, it, this definitely feels like a religious building. Like this is some some form of, of worship practice that is conducted here, although what it is, it seems very strange and unfamiliar. There is a certain sense of control and violence that you get from these images. You know how those men had plague doctor masks? Do you think that perhaps they were actually literal beaks? No, I took one of the masks off. No, uh, but the designed as beaks rather than as plague doctors. Yes, oh, yeah, maybe it, yeah. there's clearly a um, bird theme going on here. There wasn't it? anything stuffed in them like in a witch doctor's, a plague doctor's one, was, was there? No. no. Even the white feces, perhaps they uh, think they are birds. Or there's some giant birds around here. Cause well, we did. there's clearly some birds around here. We found feathers. Well, then perhaps from a headdress. It's true. Perhaps from... Costumes. When we when we, we took that body down, what it, did it die from hanging, or was there other wounds on didn't it? Didn't examine it. Seems pretty safe, bit doesn't it? It was hanging around the neck, wasn't it? it was, yeah, but there indeed. was blood as well on the robes. Mm, that's true. Mm. Might have been beaten or yeah. Perhaps they were made to fly. <laughs> Probably were for a short trip, short downward trip. Mm. Okay, do we want to continue? We, we've done three. Oh, we're on to the third that's, one, aren't that's we? That's the second. Yeah. Okay, we move to the third one. I'll cast for shadowing before we approach it. Is there any danger? No, there's no danger. Oh, the alcove, isn't it? This is the same corridor that you have. Okay, so my, my the previous co- spell applies to this corridor. Okay, so okay, so we're safe in this corridor. Okay. On the western alcove, in the third set of alcoves, two figures wearing priestly vestments dispute before an open book, while scribes transcribe the orations on vast rolls of parchment. On the eastern alcove, miserable figures are subject to punishments to make the most creative torturer green with envy. Some scramble away from heated coals, turning a great wheel to escape the licking flames, while others, with open sores, are beset by bees that have their hives in the wigs locked onto their heads. Cool. So there's obviously some disagreement over the word of law. Or well, no, not really, because well, they've, they've... Well, these laws have been interpreted... Differently, yeah, and so there are different factions of... Often, on the scales of justice, they must weigh up the actual justice with... Mercy. 
and circumstance. But it, it appears in this situation the the populace have met with a ill end, perhaps uh, unjust laws or particularly too harsh. Hmm. Sounds exactly like the real world to me, full of complicated and coercive political and social structures. Stream world's no better. Let's carry on. In the fourth set of alcoves on the western alcove, a figure in priestly vestments with a beaked mask directs a sacrifice of some slaughtered beast to be placed on a great altar in a darkened subterranean cave. On the eastern alcove, a figure wearing a papal crown and long robes rides a bulbous monstrosity with spider legs. He emerges from the shadows, moving forward to claim the sacrifice in the opposite alcove. Mouth is open in ecstatic expectation. Demon. Hmm. Interesting. Wow. <laughs> um, so is there a door into the That's next a, area? Yeah. Or? There is There is a, an archway at the end of this corridor. Which yes. we heard giggling from. Yeah. Is there, is there a door to the archway or is there just... No, it is an open archway. And when you are here at this final set of alcoves, there's a smell like the smell of livestock coming from beyond the, uh, beyond the archway. I'm going to cast for shadowing. Okay. That's a ten. Yes, there is danger beyond this door. It's dangerous behind this do- this archway. We're still on the um, path, aren't we? Yes. The tiles are still... And the, par- and the red tile path leads into the room beyond. There's some foreshadowing here <laughs> with these uh, mm. travesties to people under the guise of uh, religion and law. Mm, this seems to be a nightmarish path. Do we turn back and maybe check out the western It's almost door? worth checking out the western doors because, the, well, it isn't part of the path, perhaps. It's some other sort of storage area where they can grab things. Perhaps, though, the path is leading us this way because it's our job to liberate this place from its treasures. cursed leaders. <laughs> is it our and job, take though? The treasures is it our job, them. though? Yes. Yes, well, it is our why job. else would we be led here? Why else would these the pathway open this direction for us? You're right. We're here to destroy evil, and if this leads us to evil, we're here liberate. to We're here to explore. We're, we're not to liberate. To, no one said anything about destroying evil. Well, that's well, why those two here. did. Mm, okay, these two did. No, <laughs> I, well, what, what do you think this place is? This is a place of horrors, and it looks like. Uh, and look at the look at the murals. There's demons. The general populace are tortured and killed. Is there like could liberate them by being bringing a, down the, the kings of this place? Dave, out of character, being a cultist, would there, is there any law from my cultist studies that I'd pick up from from here? Like what? I don't know. Some mention of some rival cults or with a bird headed. Make an intelligence check. You can have advantage on it. I pass with the first one. Okay. This none of this seems familiar to you. It's all dreamlands. Uh, carry on. This does not strike you as a cult. This seems like a much more formal, official kind of religion. That there is some, there is or was at some point some kind of sanction for this, and it was not that it was a hidden thing, but it was some sort of active religious this, uh, this, organization. This seems like some sort of active religion. So an ancient religion that's not around anymore, or a maybe hidden one, or a distant hidden. Or like it wasn't. It looks like like look look at the previous alcoves. The first alcove where it's linking the tongue to all of the the skeins of thread to everyone in the city. I, th- I don't think it was hidden. I think it was uh, the religion. Like all of these structures, it's built around pushing the low even lower. I say we destroy the kings and gods of this religion and liberate. I think we go back and explore the West Room first before we come down here. Obviously, there is something further in that is of is dangerous. Um, I haven't foreshadowed the room to the West to see if there's any danger there. Yeah, let's have a quick look through the Western oh, okay. Room. Okay, we'll go back to the Western door and I'll foreshadow that. Wait, how about we have a drink of wine and reconsider our... Fortunes. We could go back and pussyfoot around looking into the West, but there is a certain danger flow that is leading us there here. There is certain danger. I agree with you, but I think we should first check the West quickly. 
just to stick our heads in. Do you wish to turn your backs on what is behind us that is giggling from the darkness? I would prefer to know if there was danger to the west behind us, if we would prefer to venture west more south. But the giggling does worry me. Yes, the giggling is concerning. What do you think we should do? I think we should stand guard here while the other two go looking to the west. And if uh, danger presents itself, we run back to them. I've got my crossbow at the ready, so okay. let's do that. Me and Sue will go do that. Okay. And who's got the lights? <laughs> I've got a candle. Oh, you got a candle. So for those keeping track, at this point, the candle is burning out. It's running out and the lantern has consumed one hour of oil. Is there, um, you said there was a lantern on the wall. Is there any way I could pull a lantern off the wall in this room? Or is it a, um, another incense burner? So you would, I mean, you might be able to pull an iron lantern. It's set into the wall. It is a lantern, however. Uh, you would need to fill it with oil, of course. There's no oil in it? No. Um, can I try and pull it? Oh, sorry, you go. I was just going to ask how long an, like a flask of oil would burn for in a lantern. Uh, four hours. Okay. So I'll just, I'll just go into some of the mechanics of this for you. A candle lasts for one hour, generally. Uh, a jar of glowing bugs, two hours. A, mi- a mirrored <laughs> lantern, four hours. A torch, one hour. The way random encounters work in this is that there is an encounter die rolled when you cause a commotion or make a ruckus when you enter a new area with no fixed encounter or when you undertake a task that lasts uh, a reasonable amount of time, (laughs) 10 minutes or more usually. So if you're searching a room for 10 minutes. Make sure we only search for nine minutes. Mm. Mm. You can't fix it. You have to search for 10 minutes in order to get the benefit of searching. Um, On a one, that's an encounter. A two to three means... Either light sources are taxed by an hour, an ongoing spell or enchantment ends, some other resource is depleted by the environment or a special event occurs if there is one. Four plus is nothing in particular. So I just rolled uh, a three, which is what's taxed your light sources. So it just means we don't necessarily have to keep track of the light sources That's cool. uh, with a lot of depth. Okay. Um so, yeah, we're almost out of light, light, candlelight. So- but, it, but it would have been about an hour anyway. I did have two oil flasks. So I assume one of them's in the la- in this first lantern. So I've got another oil flask. Okay, we'll go and I'll cast for shadowing on this room to the west. Okay, so who's got? You've got a candle. Yeah, I've got a candle. All right, it's going to last long enough for you to come and cast this spell, and then it's going to burn out. Okay. So roll for your spell. That is an eleven. That is a success. There is no sign of danger in the room beyond. Okay, we can go south. All right, we head back south. All right, the room to the west is safe. Okay. Well, let's just press on then to the south. All right, form up. I think, Suhard, you should take the lead. Very well. And if wide enough, you should stand with her with your hammer. And then Rus and myself and proceed through the arch. All right, so who's leading? Sue and me. One of you will need to roll 2d6 plus your dexterity or intelligence modifier plus two. So minus two, sorry, sorry I should say. So hang on, I'm rolling 2d6... Plus dex or intelligence, minus two. Maybe you should be doing it. Why is that? Because mine's not. Just do it. Sue Hart is rolling. Three. A three. Okay. You all make your way into this room. As I said, the room smells of livestock. Uh, You come through an archway and you can see three tiers of stone bleachers ring a decaying stage in the centre of the room. At the far end of the room, at the end of your lantern light, a black statue glitters with gems on a square pedestal. The three-foot wooden stage in the centre of the room has seen better days and appears to be collapsing at some point. What you can see about the structure of this room is it, it appears to be sort of a, almost a small amphitheatre type setup, a stage uh, in the centre on the lowest level. Where you've come out of the tunnel, that, that tunnel effectively comes out of an arch in these bleachers. The room is large, uh, larger than the, your lantern light can illuminate all of. And that's currently all you can see from en- just entering the room. It's possible I was incorrect about the direction the path leads. Sorry? It seems like at the end of a path, the direction the path leads, I thought the... Um, the path pro- leads and terminates at the stage. Yeah, exactly. I thought the procession would have started from this direction and was heading through the the other direction. It's possible it still does. They well, began this, on the stage. This and makes then... sense uh, from an architectural point of view. You are purified by the smoke 
you imbibe potions to put you into some sort of hallucinogenic state. You make your way through the procession of archers into the crowd awaiting before you where perhaps uh, a ritual is performed or someone is sacrificed. Do you think the ritual is performed here? Mm. You don't think the performers perform on this stage and then a procession begins leading? By its nature, any religious ceremony is a performance. Mm. Mm. Perhaps we should walk the bleachers looking for the, uh, the dimensions of this room. Was there another exit from this room? It appears that there is an exit in the eastern wall. Just based, you can't really see very well because it's all in shadow. Yeah, sure. Uh, but based on the, there appears to be a hole, another hole in the bleachers over there. Yeah, over and there. These bleachers, they're made of wood or stone. The bleachers are stone bleachers. Is there a behind bleachers, or it's just sort of? Uh, yeah. So this room is um, square shaped behind you where you've come from. The far end of it is a curved shape, so it's like a U shaped room, uh, and the bleachers run along the back wall uh, to the to the northern wall along both sides and around until they reach where this statue is at the on the plinth at the other end. Okay, but you can't actually like get underneath the bleachers or anything like that. They're no, just no, they're just steps. effectively big stone yeah. steps. Right, yeah. Well, the statue, the black statue. It has jewels in it or not? Or was that my You, you can see glittering, what appears to be the glittering of jewels. <laughs> Proceed, my friends. There is danger here, here though. to destroy evil, not collect treasures. If I come across any... Then You're I'll destroying, grab perhaps it would destroy the evil of this statue if we removed its valuables. Very well. There's what do you think, Sammy? Sammy? My name is not Sammy. <laughs> Samir. Let us ex- examine this room. I think, uh, yes, a few shiny trinkets could uh, help us fund whatever um, ventures we see fit from this point on. And maybe some better armour, as I <laughs> don't currently have any. Mm. So we just have to go past the stage, obviously. Yeah. Do you want to have a look at the stage? There's nothing here, is there? It's just stone. Is it a st- what's, what? Tell me about the stage. The stage is made of wood, from what you can see. It's quite dilapidated. Falling apart in places, it doesn't does not necessarily look like it's very solid footing. It appears places that uh, straw, rotting cloth, paper, and broken furniture has been stuffed under the stage to to prop it up or prop seal up. up the seal up the holes. Sure, the straw would have helped. I suppose it would. Well, as a singer, perhaps you would like to perform for us, baby. Shark no, I mean on the stage. <laughs> Pop up on the stage. We're not going to not going to be able to put this out because we're going to get copyright strikes if you try and put it on YouTube. <laughs> mm, sorry, mm, baby, cartilaginous <laughs> fish. Do 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 do. How's that? <laughs> no, the stage is what I'm getting at. Oh, the stage. Yeah, why don't you hop up on the stage and perform? The whole world is a stage, they say. <laughs> oh, okay. Said the the great <laughs> bard Who's of that? Geth himself. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Okay, let's have a look at the statue. All right, so you're making your way across the stage or around the bleachers? <laughs> around. And uh, the rest of you following? Yes. <clears throat> I'm, okay. yeah. And who has got the light source? I do. All right, as you make your way around the stage, you hear more giggling from the darkness, and suddenly... I cast figures... magic missile in the darkness. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Something kills Toby? Mm, Toby dies. <laughs> Not Toby's character. No, 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 Toby. Toby is dead now. <laughs> That's how being a dungeon master works. When you die in the game, you die in real life. A number of long, sinuous creatures with swine heads, with knowing human eyes, and the hands of children, and white, pale white skin, come rushing out of the darkness of the bleachers around you and attack. How many are there? Uh, there are four currently, and they have surprised you. Thick. Thank mm-hmm. you.